It was November, and Tom Porker was in South Dakota. Renowned for its pheasant hunting, South Dakota is an outdoorsman's dream. To say he was excited is an understatement. As he went out the door of the beautiful farmhouse, it was obviously he was not alone in anticipating the excitement of a great pheasant hunt. Folks were scurrying around, getting gear ready, dogs aired, etc. Joe Peterson of Peterson Probst Marketing Group was busy loading Honda ATVs onto trailers to transport us to the hunting fields. Joe works with Honda periodically, helping them with their marketing. The ATVs will be used to transport people around the fields we will be hunting. This will help us use our time more efficiently and effectively. More time hunting means more fun. Dennis Foster of Dakota Pheasant Guides is the host for this hunt. Dennis knows the ins and outs of a good hunt. He insists on using quality equipment. That is why he chooses Honda ATVs for his guide service. Not only does he use them for his hunting operation, but also in his ice fishing expeditions. When Dennis finds equipment that meets his criteria, he sticks with it. No time for breakdowns during a busy hunting or fishing season. We're in South Dakota hunting the wild, wily ringneck pheasant. And I'm with Jeff Hansen, landowner here in South Dakota. Jeff, I really appreciate you letting us come down here and hunt on your property. That means the world to me. I don't get to do much pheasant hunt out in the wild. You're a full-time farmer, right, Jeff? Yep. And you helped Dennis Foster a little bit, allowing people to come onto your property and do some hunting. Yep. How long have you worked with Dennis on this project? Oh, we've been working on that a few years. I've hunted no Dennis forever, and and just a good friend of mine. And do a lot of fishing together, of course, too. Okay. He's just a good friend, and yeah, we get to get together and shoot some birds. You know? Awesome, awesome. Are you, as a full-time farmer and rancher when you leave these corners and this cover what does that mean for you to see how the birds and the deer and the wildlife take to those areas that you're sacrificing from your income to allow this to happen well, I just really enjoy wildlife and it's something that you know it's nice to leave a little bit you know you know we take enough from the land that we can give a little back and have some have some good bird hunting. that's awesome Jeff Hansen South Dakota Again, thank you, Jeff. Means the world. You allow us to be here. We got too early on on that one. It's That's dropping it. down. We got too early on. Right up by the house, right up by the barn. Yeah. I'm with Dennis Foster. Dennis, we just got done hunting one of your properties down here in South Dakota. Unbelievable. All wild birds? 100%. That's great. That is absolutely great. You don't, folks. When you come to a lot of these uh, lodges, a lot of these outfitting services, and they're telling you they're shooting five, six, seven thousand birds a year, no matter what they say, they're replenishing those birds with pen-raised birds. You cannot sustain that population, can you? Dan? You're, you're exactly right. And uh, what most lodges are limited to is, is a smaller amount of acres. What I've done is I've established relationships with literally a couple dozen large landowners. So I have over 50,000 acres on tap just this season. So we can rotate amongst properties. So we're constantly hunting wild birds and they're non-pressured birds. Uh, we rest a piece a minimum of a week, preferably two weeks before we ever touch a piece. Uh, some years we have properties that don't even get touched. Lodging. You have the property, I just saw that you had the birds. Tell folks how you set up the lodging, and tell them how you set up a lot of your packages for these okay. folks. What I've got is I've got three different lodging options. This season we're going to expand that to five, possibly six. 
for next season with that I also have a large geographical area right now we're in the Redfield area we have a large amount of property here we have lodging in the Redfield area also in the Millette area which is my hometown we have lodging there that consists of a very nice farmhouse we have a couple man cave type options as well and in addition to that we've also got uh, 20,000 acres plus of ground in the Roscoe area which is 40 miles west of Aberdeen and I largely use that for self-guided hunters because there's a lot of these fellas that have good dogs of their own they know how to hunt they don't need me there to hold their hand so basically what we do is we show them several pieces of property enough for them to hunt during their stay make some suggestions on how they should hunt the properties give them a map for reference they check back every evening let us know how they did you know if we can offer any more help to them we certainly can rotate them on, on some different type of properties for you folks at home Dennis has a variety of packages to fit your needs and your wants and I can guarantee you he'll come through for you South Dakota doesn't have the amount of birds that it has had in the past but Dennis's unpressured grounds just probably allowed me to have one of the greatest hunts I've ever had in my life. Dennis, tell folks how they can reach you. They can go to dakotapheasantguide.com is, is the best place to reach me. Uh, phone numbers, all the contact information is there. Cell numbers there, uh, you know, you're welcome to call that. I've got it with me at most times and uh, I'm always happy to talk hunt. Dennis has led all over South Dakota to hunt pheasants. It's a very unique experience to hunt unpressured pheasants in so many different kinds of habitat. One day you can be on the flatlands hunting grass and cornfields. The next day you're in bluff country hunting tree lines, Rooster. brush, and rolling hills. This trip was in the month of November, when a lot of other areas the birds are already overpressured, which makes them jumpy and difficult to hunt. Dakota Pheasant Guides has a lot of land, so birds are not overly pressured. Tom noticed that we had a lot of very good dog work. The pointing breeds seemed to have many solid points on both hens and roosters. The flushing breeds are putting up birds well within gun range. Some so close as to make a person jump with excitement. Pondering everything Tom saw on this great hunting trip with Dennis, he feels this would be a great opportunity to get a young dog onto wild birds. You could pick the proper cover for your dog's skill level. He feels like there's nothing like wild birds to make a great gun dog. Remember, South Dakota has a ton of birds, even in down years. Folks, we're on day two of a great South Dakota pheasant hunt. As you can tell, the weather's changed and also the area's changed. We're hunting a lot of trees, a lot of low brush. Tell us what we're doing today, Dennis, would you please? Well, basically what we did is we picked up, we were south of Aberdeen yesterday hunting. Uh, due to the amount of ground that I have, we're actually 40 miles west of Aberdeen today. Okay. A little rougher country out here, a little more rolling, uh, you know, more cattle. Right. Than there is the intensive farming, so there's more cover options. Uh, as you can see, we're in some heavy weeds here and some young trees. Right. Uh, they've also had a lot of high water issues out here lately. I saw that. That was very surprising because where we were yesterday was bone dry. Right. And when we started to come west here, the water increased per mile, it seemed like. Right. And we're in a pothole region. It has to evaporate to get out. The next piece we're going to move to is actually a piece that hasn't seen a tractor in four years. Wow. And wow. We're gonna, we're gonna try to get in there with ATVs okay. and, and access that, so there should be some decent birds in there. And okay, great. Now we were, we worked this shelter belt, and those birds. Is it because of the weather? They were loaded up in there. Right. Um, what What was the deal today? Because there had to be three, four hundred birds come out of there. Basically, they're wild birds, and they're smarter than we are most yeah. times. I think everybody that's here are all experienced hunters. We're yep. in agreement. 
the wind was blowing that direction, that's where we figured we needed blockers and yeah. flankers, and I'll be darned if they didn't go the opposite. Yeah, <laughs> and so, that's hunting. Exactly. That's hunting, yep. Exactly. And, and what I was surprised of, and it's fairly open in that, uh, the actual mature trees, those birds just booked right through there, didn't they? And they yep. knew where to go yep. in a heck of a hurry. Exactly, they found the lane and they got out on us. They it. got out on us. Yep. Lesson, folks, best laid plans, don't stick to them. <laughs> and this is day two. I lined up? Yeah. He line. looks scared. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he looks scared. This is for posterity. Okay. <laughs> the, uh, hey, sir Tom, my name's Joe Peterson. We're out here in South Dakota. Yeah. I represent American Honda here. Brought a couple of ATVs with us to help out and hunt. And they have been wonderful to work with, haven't they, they Joe? Have been. Uh, it's amazing how far they've come. Yep. When when did Honda bring that first one into the United States? Honda made American Honda made their first four-wheeler or ATV yep. in 1984. And as a matter of fact, just this last summer, their two million ATV wow. engine came off the plant in South Carolina. That's amazing. These Hondas have helped us in every step for transporting people around the grounds, to pulling the trailer, to getting through mud holes, to water holes. Joe, tell, tell folks how that might fit into the whole routine of the hunt. Tell yeah. them what you've used them for yeah. this hunt and helping yeah. us out with this. Yeah, for the outdoorsman, for the, the hunter, the ATV is very handy. Um, we've used it just with this hunt, hauling the trailer, loading the trailer up with, with hunters and with dogs, moving our blockers around, moving the party around, getting them lined up. So for the pheasant hunt, great utility. Yeah. You know, deer hunters, they know the yep. utility of the ATV for pulling out a deer, whatever it might be. That's but right. A lot of utility in these ATV products. Joe, as you're hauling us around, we went into a spot yesterday that the first thing, there was water everywhere, yep. there was ducks, there was geese. Yep. Can you imagine having an ATV like we use to yep. get back in there and get, tell, tell yeah. people how you think that would work. Yeah, for the waterfowler, the ATV plays a lot of roles. You know, we used it yesterday. Yep. We had a road that was flooded. We had to get across the road. We hooked up the Honda Big Red, which is their side by side. Yes. Hooked up the trailer, went right across that road, right through the water, got to the side of the, the field that we needed right. to get to, to get after the birds. Just, just think, you waterfowlers at home, you could have hauled a blind in there very easily with that big red. You could haul your buddy's dogs, their gear, the dog blinds, the decoys. The, the amount of things you could do with that machine was endless yesterday. Yeah. If you were a duck hunter, and as pheasant hunters, we couldn't have worked this out without it. Yeah. Now, Honda doesn't come on in their advertising as a big, splashy company. Right, that's right. What is their role in the way they like to approach their machinery. Yep. Uh, at Honda there's a there's a saying that we use it's called DQR and that stands for dependability, quality, and reliability. And we see it in their ATVs and their their side by sides you see it in their motorcycles, their lawnmowers, everything, their automobiles for that matter. Right. DQR is, is what it's all about. And as the sportsman it's very important because we all know how hard we work, we know how much time we invest and how much money we spend in our lifestyle that's right and you can't afford to not have things work right so for instance the honda atv is a shaft drive system i think that's huge a lot of the other makers mm -hmm. have a belt drive right and with that shaft drive it's a direct linkage which means you're not losing any power coming mm. off of an angle link right so that allows you to have you might not need as big a machine because you're not losing any of that power you got the shaft you don't have to worry about breaking down in the field there you go you folks at home if you're working on your machine a lot you're hunting very little give honda a look dqr is what they're all about and if you have any questions joe where could they reach you they can reach us uh we're in, we're in the minneapolis office uh number there is 612-767-3939 all right give joe a call if you have any questions Roger. Wow. 
Get up further, 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 I guess. Here, come here. Don't get way up ahead. Up there 50, 60 yards. Here. Dad, let's give up. Hey. Good boy. Okay, let him up. Come okay, on, let's go. Dennis, are these birds armor plated in South Dakota or what? They're definitely wild. These these are the real deal. They're uh. They're tough birds, uh, gamey as, as yeah, can be. Yeah. You're seeing that with uh, what, what it's taken to knock them down. Well, folks, there's there's been numerous times where we've had a triple, if not quadruple, shoot these birds. And these dogs have been working fantastic. I'm gonna tell you what, there's nothing like a true wild bird dog. They know how to stay in gun range. We're not, these shots are not 50 yarders. These are 10, 15 yard shots max, and these dogs are doing exceptional pinning them birds into the guns, aren't they, Dennis? You bet, you bet. This is, uh, you know, it's just a dream for the true uh, upland bird. It really is. is. It is. You know, this is no pen raise type stuff no. that flutters up and falls down. Yep. You know, we're working, obviously. The humans are working, the dogs are working yep. hard, and, yep. uh, you know, we're needing to, to make good, solid shots yep. on these birds. Yep. And, I'm going to tell you what, folks, if you want a true outdoor adventure, and I mean something real, that you have to, like our boys here in the background, are still hunting while Dennis and I are trying to do this for you folks at home. But we thought it's very important to stress that these are wild birds, and they are tough to bring down, and you need exceptional dogs, exceptional guns, and let's talk chokes. We've had to tighten these chokes yep, up quite a bit. Yeah, up yesterday. This trip with Dakota Pheasant Guides was one for the books. Tom has trained gun dogs for over 30 years, so when he can watch dogs chase wild birds, it's exciting. They had many different types of dogs hunting with them. All of the dogs loved all the bird contact they had. People love their dogs, and it is fun to watch them interact with their canine partners. Hold it, hold it right here. One of these bricks is on point again. Ten, ten, ten. good Diesel, job. Up, up, good job. The pointing breeds we had started with were Brittany's of the field trial variety. They ran big and pointed hard with style. Tom had fun watching them dissect the field. They also had German shorthairs that had been hunting wild pheasants for years. These shorthairs had a knack of tracking pheasants, then pinning them down for their human hunting partners without blowing the pheasants out. Dogs learn this through wild bird contact. The short hairs also loved to retrieve. They worked hard to find cripples, and they did not lose a bird on this trip. And of course, what would a trip to pheasant country be without our lovable Labrador retrievers? And the labs on this trip did a great job. They worked close to the guns, which is important when birds are bunched up in sloughs. They mark down birds even in the thickest cover, like only labs can do. When you have a large group of people, it can get very confusing for the dogs with all of the shooting and multiple birds down. These labs kept their wits about them and did a great job. Last but not least, the marvelous mongrels. We had a few mixed breed dogs with a boatload of talent. They hunted hard, listened well, had good noses, and enjoyed retrieving. These mixed breeds did an awesome job. Rooster! Go. 
If you want an ultimate trip for you and your dog, contact Dennis Foster at Dakota Pheasant Guide.